Talks with Ramana Maharishi Talk 54 A pundit, an elderly gentleman, had some doubts regarding Ganapati Muni's exposition of Advaita, non-duality. He found some discrepancies in some books. Ramana Maharishi pointed out that Dakshinamurti did not teach anything of the kind. All that was, was only silence, and the doubts of the disciples were cleared. The significance is that there is nothing to be learnt, discussed, and concluded. Everyone knows, I am. There is the confusion that the I is the body, because the I arises from the Absolute and gives rise to the intellect. In the intellect, the I looks the size and shape of the body. Brahman, the Self, cannot be apprehended by the intellect. Intellect depends on I, I. I, I depends on Brahman. How can such intellect crossing over I, I discover Brahman? It is impossible. Just get over the false conception of the I being the body. Discover to whom the thoughts arise. If the present I-ness vanishes, the discovery is complete. What remains over is the pure self. Compare deep sleep and wakefulness. Diversity and body are found only in wakefulness. In deep sleep, the self remains without the perception of body or of the world. Happiness reigns there. The scriptural statement, Aham Brahmasmi, that is, I am Brahman, relates to the state and not the mode of mind. One cannot become Brahman by continuing to repeat the mantra, a divine chant. It means that Brahman is not elsewhere. It is yourself. Find that self. Brahman is found. Do not attempt to reach Brahman as if it were in some far-off place. The pundit remarked that thoughts are so persistent that the aham, I, I, cannot be reached. The master said, the Brahma Karavritti, that is, thinking of the self alone, helps to turn the mind away from other thoughts. Either some such practice is necessary or association with sages should be made. The sage has already overcome the mind and remains in peace. The sage's proximity helps to bring about such condition in others. Otherwise, there is no meaning in seeking the company of a sage. Deho aham, I am the body, is limitation. And it is the root of all mean and selfish actions and desires. Brahma Aham, I am Brahman, is passing beyond limitation and signifies sympathy, charity, love, and so on, which are divine and virtuous. Devotee, how does a grihastha householder proceed in the scheme of moksha, liberation, Maharishi, why do you think you are a grahastha, householder? 
if you go out as a sannyasi, a hermit, a similar thought that you are a sannyasi will haunt you. Whether you continue in the household or renounce it and go to the forest, your mind haunts you. The ego is the source of thoughts. It creates the body and the world and makes you think that you are a grahastha, householder. If you renounce the world, it will only substitute the thought, sannyasi, for grahastha and the environments of the forest for those of the household. But the mental obstacles are always there. They even increase in new surroundings. There is no help in the change of environment. The obstacle is the mind. It must be got over, whether at home or in the forest. If you can do it in the forest, why not in the home? Therefore, why change the environment? Your efforts can be made even now, in whatever environment you may be. The environment never abandons you according to your desire. Look at me. I left home. Look at yourselves. You have come here leaving the home environment. What do you find here? Is this different from what you left? Even if one is immersed in nirvikalpa samadhi, mind merged in the self for years together, when he emerges from it, he will find himself in the environment which he is bound to have. That is the reason for the Acharya Shankara emphasizing Sahaja Samadhi, mind resolved in the self, in preference to Nirvikalpa Samadhi in his excellent work Viveka Chudamani, the crest jewel of discrimination between the real and the unreal. One should be in spontaneous Samadhi that is, in one's pristine state, in the midst of every environment. Later on, Sri Bhagavan said, Control of breath may be internal or external. The Antak Pranayama, the internal breath regulation, is as follows. Naham Chinta I am not the body idea is rechaka, exhalation. Koham, who am I, puraka, inhalation. Soham, I am he, is kumbhaka, retention of breath. Doing thus, the breath becomes automatically controlled. Bahih pranayama, external control, is for one not endowed with strength to control the mind. There is no method so sure as that, or a sage's company. The external practice must be resorted to by a wise man if he enjoys a sage's company. If in a sage's company, the sage provides the needed strength even though unseen by others. Pranayama, breath control, need not be exactly as described in Hatha Yoga. If engaged in Japa, Dhyana, Bhakti, that is chanting, meditation or devotion and so on, just a little control of breath will suffice to control the mind. The mind is the rider and the breath the horse. Pranayama, breath control, is a check on the horse. 
by that check on the horse the rider is checked pranayama breath control may be done just a little to watch the breath is one way of doing it the mind abstracted from other activities is engaged in watching the breath that controls the breath and in its turn the mind is controlled if unable to do rechaka exhalation and puraka inhalation they need not be practiced breath may be just retained a short while in japa chanting dhyana meditation bhakti devotion and so on then too good results will follow